Hello everyone, Daz here with a video on how to create a basic responsive slider using Slider Revolution. In the dashboard, click New Blank Module, click Start Guide. Slider will be selected by default, so just click Next Step. Select Auto so that our slider maintains its aspect ratio when behaving responsively. Next Step again. Intelligent Inheriting is selected by default, which helps automate much of our responsive design, so just click Go to Editor. I'm going to drag the timeline a bit lower so you can see where the bottom of the blue dashed lines are. These lines represent the container area of our slider. Let's shorten them a bit. Under Module General Options, click Layout. If I reduce the height of our layer area size to say 750 pixels, the length of the blue lines will shrink to match the new height of our slide. Now I can drag the timeline back up to roughly where the blue lines end. That makes everything nicely visible. For our background, select Slide Options. Background should be selected by default. Choose Coloured from the drop-down list. Then click on the BG Colour field. Next to Colour Type, click on the Gradient Type icon. The purple preset gradient will work nicely for our first slide's background, so I'm going to choose that. Let's add an image. Hover over Add Layer, Image, and click on Object Library. I'm going to pick a medium-sized image from Slider Revolution's free image library. Use the grab handle to decrease the image to 500 pixels in width, or you can just go to the position and size panel and type 500 into the W field. Let's align our image and create an anchor point for it. Click the right horizontal alignment icon, then click the vertical middle alignment icon. The image is flush against the edge now, but if I type 75 into the X field, that will shift it 75 pixels away from the alignment anchor point. To give our image a border, click Style. Then in the border panel, click on Border Color. I'm going to go with a white border. Close the color window, and then let's change the border style to Solid. Select the padlock icon to lock all fields together, and now I can type 15 pixels into the first field and all other border fields will update relative to that, which gives us a nice even white border all round. Let's add a shadow to the image. For that, select Advanced Style, then go down and turn the Box Shadow Effect Radio button to On. Let's try a 5 pixel wide shadow on the X axis and a 5 pixel wide shadow on the Y axis. Now click on Shadow Color, and let's go with Black. Drag the Opacity slider down to about 50%, or you can just type 50 into the Opacity field. Now click on the blue tick to apply the changes. Head on over to the Box Shadow panel and type 30 into the Blur field, and that will make our shadow look a lot more like a shadow. I'm happy with our image, so let's now add some text. Hover over Add Layer, Text, and click on Quick Style Headline. Then pick a headline style from the panel on the right. Once your Quick Style is applied, you can close the Quick Style panel. Then under the Layer Options tab, click on Content. In the Layer Content field, you can modify the text to read whatever you would like. Once done, click on Size and Position. Then click on the left horizontal alignment icon, as well as the top vertical alignment icon. This anchors our text to the left and top of our slide. Now select the text on the canvas, and you can hold shift and use the arrows on your keyboard to move the text to wherever you would like on your canvas. Or you can just go straight to the position and size panel and type in values in the X and Y fields for setting its position directly. The values in these fields will reposition the text relative to the left and top alignment anchor points that we set a moment ago. OK, let's add another layer of text. This will be a subheading, so I'm going to go with a smaller quick style headline. Railway looks pretty good, so let's go with that. Close the quick style headline panel, click on content, and once again, change the text to what you want it to read. Design a slider in minutes. To anchor our new text, click size and position, and in the position and size panel, click the left horizontal alignment icon and the top vertical alignment icon. Now select the new text layer, then hold shift and use your keyboard arrows to reposition it. Or you can type X and Y coordinates directly into the position and size panel. 
that's enough content for now, so let's add some animation. Select slide 1, and then under layer options, click animation. Click the in drop down button, then block transitions, and then select block from left. I like that animation, so I'm going to select the subheading layer. Also click the in drop down button, and again, I'm going to apply the block from left block transition. Let's do the exact same procedure with our image. So select the image layer, click the in drop down button. Only this time under block transitions, let's choose block from right. All right, let's click the play button on our timeline to see how that looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Our animations look pretty good on our content, but how about we animate the slide background as well? For that, click on slide options, then on animation. There's quite a few choices here, but let's try boxes. Maybe expand, fade. And let's maybe go with, yeah, edges. All right, let's preview that on the timeline again. Yep, that looks good. Let's check responsiveness. We're in desktop view now, but all other responsive layouts are set to off. That's because we chose intelligent inheriting at the start. If we click preview, we can look at how each of our responsive layouts has been automated by Slider Revolution. Notebook view, tablet view, and mobile. They all look good except mobile, which is a little hard to see. We should change that. Close the preview window, then go back up to our responsive layouts and switch the mobile radio button to on. Click on mobile to change the view. Then you can use the grab handles of the image to resize it. All right, that suits our mobile view better. Now to align the image properly, go over to layer options and click on size and position. Then click the center horizontal alignment icon and the top vertical alignment icon. This anchors our image to the center top point of our container. Now you can select the image, hold shift on your keyboard and use the arrows on your keyboard to reposition the image to where you would like it. Alternatively, you can specify an exact Y axis value by typing, say, 280 pixels into the position and size Y field. Okay, I think our image looks pretty good. Let's now adjust our text. Select the main heading layer. Use the white grab handle to adjust the text size to suit. Or if you prefer to type in a precise value, head over to the first font and icon field. Now let's create an alignment anchor point. Click size and position and click on the center horizontal alignment and top vertical alignment icons just like we did with the image. Make sure the layer is selected, then hold shift down on your keyboard and use your arrow keys to reposition the text. Or you could just type a value into the Y field to specify where exactly you want the text relative to its alignment anchor point. Now let's do the subheading. Select it and use the grab handle to resize the text. That's a readable size, but now we have a pop-up message informing us the layer is outside of the grid, which has caused auto layer width to be removed and line break to be set to content based. I don't want to make the text smaller, so let's fix that another way. Using the smaller grab handles, I'm going to adjust the size of the text box to suit the area where I want the text to appear. I'd like it about there. And as we've done numerous times already, head over to the position and size panel and anchor your image by selecting your preferred alignment points. Select the text layer and once again hold shift and use your arrow keys to reposition the text where you'd like it. Under the layer options tab, click content. Then select the center text align option. The warning pop-up we got before told us the line break field value had changed to content based. You'll find that here. If we change text align to content and width based, you'll notice our text will now wrap within the box shape we specified earlier. Only now our line spacing is a bit out. To fix that, click Style, then in the field where you see two vertical T's on top of each other, change the value to, say, 45 pixels. Now the line spacing in our wrapped text is narrower, and really it's good enough for our purposes here, so let's move on. Let's save our changes and preview what we've created so far. That looks good enough to me, so let's move on and add some navigation arrows to the bottom of our slide. Select the Navigation Options tab, then click Arrows. Switch the arrow type radio button to on. You can see the default arrow style on the canvas there. That style will work, but let's change it anyway. To do that, click on the arrow style drop down and select one of the styles from the list there. I'm going to go with Clean Arrows. 
They look good, but I did say I wanted the arrows positioned at the bottom of the slider and not on the left or right. To do that, go to the alignment field for both the left and right arrows and select the position in the grid where you'd like the arrows to be placed. By making identical selections, both arrows are now flush against the bottom of the slide and they're also overlapping. To fix the overlapping, go to the left arrow panel and type a value of say, minus 30 pixels into the X field. For the right arrow, try positive 30 pixels. Let's try moving them up by 40 pixels each by typing a value of 40 into the Y fields for both arrows. That's good, let's save that and give it a preview. Our slide is previewing just fine, but there are no navigation arrows on it. That's because we haven't created any other slides to navigate to. So let's do that now. Close the preview window, hover over slides, Hover over the new slide we just created, then click the third icon you see to the right there. This will duplicate the slide that we just made. To make it easy to tell the difference between our slides, let's modify this new slide's content. Select the heading, head over to Layer Options and click Content, and I'm just going to change this to read Slide 2. Select the image, click Object Library, and I'm going to pick another medium-sized image from Slider's Free Image Library. Let's also change the background by going to Slide Options, click Background, click BG Color, and choose a different preset gradient from the preset group. Blue will work nicely. Okay, let's switch back to Desktop View so we can see what it looks like. That's pretty good. Let's repeat what we just did by duplicating the slide that we just created. So now we have a third slide, and again we can select the heading, I'm going to change that to read slide 3. I'll swap out this image for another medium sized image from the object library. And again we'll change the background from the slide options tab, and once again I'm just going to select a preset gradient. That one looks nice, let's go with that. So now we have three slides, let's save that and give it a preview. And now because we actually have multiple slides, our navigation arrows are visible, allowing us to page left or right through the slides that we created. Notice our preview is in mobile view, even though our canvas is in desktop view. Just remember, you can change the layout view of your preview from within the preview window itself. Obviously there's a lot more we could do content wise for our slides, but for our purposes here, this will do. Let's say that we're done and we're happy with our slide and we now want to add it to our blog. Make sure it's saved, then click on the back button to go back to the Slider Revolution dashboard. From here, click the drop down of the slide you just created and click rename. Be sure to give it a name that you will remember. I'm going to name mine Basic Slider Number 1. Now just head over to the WordPress post or page that you want to add your slider to. I'm going to add a new post from scratch. Let me quickly add a title, basic slider creation made easy. Now add a block, search for slider revolution if you don't already see it there, and click on it. Pick the slider you just created, which for me was basic slider 1. I'll just add some text. Slider Revolution makes the task of creating a slider presentation super easy with no coding experience required. You can create a slider for your WordPress post or page within minutes. There we go. Now just click preview. And that's how easy it is. A basic responsive slider inside a brand new post on WordPress done in mere minutes. Pretty cool. And really, you can do it even faster than that if you're not trying to explain the process as you go like I was. Anyway, that's all there is for this video. Thank you for watching and enjoy using Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now. The world's most powerful WordPress builder.